I absolutely agree with you, Dr. Ho, about you know how detrimental um, the impact of untreated hearing loss can be on relationships. And even based on my personal experience as a clinical audiologist, I find that with the hearing aid wearers that I've managed, those that have better quality social interactions are those that are often, first, they, they start wearing their hearing aids earlier, or they opt the end or optimize the usage of their hearing aids, and that eventually leads to better quality of life and better outcomes. Yes, uh, April, completely agree with you. And I think those success stories, right, warms the heart, right? Yeah, and totally. it tells you, well, we, we must be doing something right mm -hmm. here. And those are the stories that uh, we really want to share with uh, uh, the many other patients that we have. And, but often we encounter many barriers, right? And for the patients, uh, denial, mm -hmm. ignorance about their hearing loss, and then stigma and prejudice about hearing aids. And in fact, very often they would have heard about hearing aids from families and friends yeah, who friends. have used hearing aids. And often they will come up with comments like, oh, the hearing aids are not really that helpful and they are noisy, right? Mm. This thing about that's, hearing that's, aids that's a very common. noisy. Yes. Yeah. And I suppose um, it's this concept, right, of uh, letting them understand about auditory deprivation. Mm. I think we previously uh, discussed about how patients present late, yes. uh, 7 to 10 years. Yes, right, 7 to 10 said? years. Yeah. We see that very common in our region that, you know, yeah. they, they typically about 7 to 10 years um, for, for someone who has hearing loss to yeah. take action, to seek help. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see that often in your yeah, yeah. yeah, and I, and if you ask me, I believe that 7 to 10 years is probably an underestimation. Oh. It's probably even longer. Uh, but the, the why is that important, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's about uh, the function of the brain when it comes to hearing. Um, the brain is very intelligent, right? Since we were young, as a baby, our brain has learned to recognize what is background noise. Yeah. Yeah. Within the home, the sound of the fan, washing machine, um, yeah, traffic noises mm -hmm. outside, and to differentiate that from the useful sounds, sounds. conversations, yeah. right? Conver speech sound. Uh, that's how we build human relationships. It's like a filter. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And the brain does this automatically, yeah. right? Yeah. But the trouble is, if you have hearing loss for a long time, mm. the first thing that you stop hearing are the background noises, mm. right? So after a while, the brain forgets what background noises are. So imagine if you were hearing it for the first time, yeah. after not hearing background noises for 10 years, 15 years, it's going to be kind of noisy because yeah. your brain is going to hear all these noises again. Suddenly you get aware of the background yeah. sounds, the surrounding yeah. sounds. Mm. Yeah. Correct. And really, we need to give our brains time mm. to learn again what these background noises are and to learn to filter them out, right? And so you need to wear the hearing aid consistently to, to adapt. So yeah, so I think auditory, auditory deprivation has a major impact yeah. on successful hearing aid usage. Absolutely. No wonder, you know, like um, this is actually what we sing and what we say in our clinic as well, we often tell our patients, look, you don't just hear or listen with your ears, you actually hear and listen with your brains as well. And in fact, recent studies have also shown that, you know, our brains require auditory stimulation to keep active and that actually reduces the risk of cognitive decline, correct? Yes, I, I'm, I'm glad you brought this up because over the last 10 years, there has been so many studies mm. done around the world, including in Singapore. Oh, yeah, and they all show a consistent mm. finding that um, the that hearing loss is a significant risk factor for cognitive decline. And when you analyze the data from all these studies, um, the, the, the scientists came to the conclusion that hearing loss is the number one, number one yeah. modifiable risk factor for dementia. Number one modifier risk factor. Yes. Wow, such yeah. a strong correlation. Correct, yeah. And most of my patients will be completely surprised when they hear this and they'll say, wow, I didn't realize that was so important, right? And I think it's nice to be able to, uh, for the conversation to get to this level yeah. because it's about making the patient realize that it's not just about treating hearing loss. It's about improving quality of life, yes. improving communication, uh, keeping the brain stimulated, yes. and ultimately it's about reducing your chance of getting dementia. Oh, wow, so the, you, you help your ears and you help your brains. Oh, exactly. Wow, yeah. that's absolutely good. Yeah, and I think if we can move the conversation, right, pivot the conversation yes. from just treating hearing loss, treating hearing mm. loss, to about treating the brain, 
and maintaining good mental health. I think uh, that's how you connect to the patient and that's how you can motivate a lot more patients to do the right thing.